on behalf of all of us in this house, I would like to present unreserved apologies for what took place on Friday. In the end, he's sorry. Justin Trudeau finally decided to show up for work days after the scandal broke that the House had lauded a Nazi when Vladimir Zelensky was visiting. Hello, I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Brian Lilly and Warren Kinsella. Brian, I sound a little, you know, deflated, defeated ab ab about this, how this has all unfolded. But days after the scandal breaks, Days after we we honor the, the president of Ukraine in our House of Commons, mm -hmm. and then a, and then then a, a an American a Jewish uh, magazine breaks the story that it was actually an SS Nazi that they were all applauding twice, two standing ovations. Uh, Trudeau was nowhere to be found. No. He finally shows up and says, "I'm sorry on behalf of all of Canada." Well, he said on behalf of all of us in the House and on behalf of Canada, you know, it's never a personal apology for him. He apologizes for the actions of other people. And he even did say at a certain point that uh, we could all learn from this. Again, we're back to this is a learning opportunity for all of us. How about a learning opportunity for you? Look, I, I was on the Hill. My office was in center block for a long time. Traditionally, the speaker was the only person in charge of security on the House of Commons. After the 2014 terror attack happened, that changed. And much of it, I mean, they combined, there used to be a separate House of Commons police force and a Senate police force. They combined that into Parliamentary Protective Services, which reports to the RCMP, which reports to the Minister of Public Safety. A big shift that happened in about 2015, 2016. On top of that, it's this was a state visit of a wartime leader and there's not just the security issue, 98-year-old man's not a security threat, but he's a political threat. And the PMO should have been stage managing this as closely as they stage managed the uh, rally that they held for the Liberal Party. It was a taxpayer-funded rally for the Liberal Party with Zelensky on Friday night in Toronto. That was everything down to the final moments was stage managed by PMO. But they somehow missed this, then that is a shame on them. I can tell you when um, President Obama came to the House of Commons in 2009, when my office was still in center block, I had to be vetted again to go into the building that I went into every day, where my office was on the same floor as the prime minister. That's the level of security that the House of Commons has gone to for past visits by world leaders, and that's what they should have done for this visit, but they didn't do it. But don't worry, Justin Trudeau's apologized for you and for Warren and for me. And, yeah. we, and that, now we can all learn. I It always shocks me, Warren, his failures are our learning lessons. But aside from that for a moment, I, I think we can all agree, okay, this was a mistake. Yes, this, because no one in their right mind willingly invites Nazi into the people's house to be lauded with a foreign dignitary that is who is Jewish present. So we're going to say, okay, it's all a mistake, a, a colossal one, colossal failure. Anthony Rhoda, now former speaker. Okay, he's taken responsibility and accountability. He's resigned. But is there, uh, you know, from, from what the opposition has been saying, and, and frankly, a lot of people are still saying, Trudeau's the leader of this country. He's the prime minister. Why isn't he taking some accountability? You know, this guy makes a lot of mistakes. Like, I'm just fed up with this guy. Mm -hmm. But there's a few really big things that happened this week. You know, number one, Vladimir Zelensky is, in my opinion, the Winston Churchill of our time. He is, in fact, the leader of the free world. And we embarrassed him on the world stage. That's number one. Number two... We provided fodder for the Russian propaganda machine mm -hmm. of Vladimir Putin. Putin has been arguing for months, baselessly, that his war in Ukraine is to denazify Ukraine. Until now, he really never had any footage to prove that argument. Canada gave it to him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the third point is, guys, like, this one is huge. Like, you make mistakes in politics all the time. You know, when I worked in politics, God knows I made plenty. But this one is of a magnitude. It is of a size that is truly unprecedented. 
So the usual, pardon the expression, bullshit about a learning opportunity. And, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of all of us. It's like, no, pal, yeah. you need to apologize for what happened here because it was huge. Can I just jump in there? He has not apologized to Zelensky. As we speak, he has not been on the phone with Zelensky. I asked the PMO on Tuesday if they could, you know, has a call been made? Uh, if so, what was the nature of the call? How did it go? And the response Well, maybe was, Zelensky doesn't want to talk to him. Maybe not. But they said at the time, if there had been a call, there would be a readout, which I haven't received a readout as we're recording this. So unless a call is happening now, they haven't spoken. And the PMO has not reached out to their equivalent in um, in Kiev to do the same. This is they, they, they've now apparently sent uh, an apology through formal cha channels, meaning a diplomatic letter. Uh, that, that's and meanwhile, meanwhile, it's the government of Poland that is actually taking that's steps right. to extradite this man who Canada accepted with open arms 50 years ago. In the 50s, as Erwin Cogger says, it was easier to get into Canada if you were a Nazi than if you were a Jew. Like we have much to atone for here. Mm -hmm. And just what Trudeau did this week ain't going to cut it. I want to talk about that just more broadly for a moment, because I think that's part of what is being missed in all this. Like, you know, we feel very isolated in Canada. You know, we are a big nation, coast to coast. Things don't happen in isolation anymore. And to say that, Brian, our our global reputation has been tarnished by this would be a massive understatement. But it was happening already prior to this. We can talk about the multiple da disastrous India trips. We can talk about his other multiple disastrous, you know, when he attended the Queen's funeral and he's singing in a bar. I mean, th there's a long list of issues with, with Justin Trudeau, no question about that. But now handing Putin propaganda arm, they've gone so far as to, they. you want to talk about disinformation, misinformation, fake news, they are creating fake uh, um stamps now putting this guy's face on it saying that yeah. that's what so so it's it's already we know that that the russians are the masters of the um of, of the fake out and i mean putin used to be a kgb agent for heaven's sake he doesn't forget that those lessons quickly when you're in that position and you're Zelensky traveling the world going around really trying to stitch together some sort of coalition, some sort of ability to fight back against this evil regime, and then this falls in your lap. How, I mean, how do you get past this? You know, I was speaking with um, former Liberal Cabinet Minister Ujjal Dessange about how we repair our relationship with India, and he said, really, it won't happen until both the, the Trudeau administration and the Modi administration are gone. And hmm. in this case, it's not going to be repaired with Ukraine and Zelensky until Trudeau is gone. Um, you know, this is unfortunately part of the great unraveling of our, our international reputation. The Canada's back claim of 2015 was always false, but you know, now we can point to instance after instance. This, India, uh, being excluded from security and intelligence sharing agreements with our British Australian uh, allies, uh, being excluded from trade agreements at the G20 with allies we would normally be on board with. You know, the, the rest of the world is not taking Trudeau seriously. And, and now they've now you've got this on top of it, which um, I, I don't know how he recovers from this in terms of dealing with foreign leaders. There's obviously the true non crowd here in Canada that will back him no matter what. Warren and I hear from them on an almost daily basis, and they're going to love him and blame everyone else. I've, I've seen the Truanon types online try to make the claim that this was all actually a conservative setup. And if you dig deep enough, Pierre Polyev's the one to blame. Warren, just last word to you on this. I, you know, they had their emergency caucus meeting. You know, we invited to, for the liberals a, a late night conversation. Uh, and then the, Brian had managed to get some reporting out of it, but what are you hearing? I mean, this is this is an ongoing thing that has been, we, we had the disaster of the India trip. So then he decided that it, this was now time to go public about accusing the Indian government of allegedly being involved in the assassination of a Canadian on Canadian soil, an, a 
someone the Indian government has called a Khalistani and a terrorist. He comes there and, he, and then he brings in Vladimir Zelensky to change the channel on sagging poll numbers. But this is worse. So what are you hearing from liberals? Well, there was that gathering on the uh, Hill uh, late at night, kind of unprecedented, something that doesn't happen very often. And all the limousines gathered up there. And the only person who can summon that kind of meeting is Justin Trudeau, prime minister. And uh, you know, I think some some people were getting the champagne out in the hope that he was going to be announcing he's resigning. He ain't going nowhere, folks. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. He's staying put. He thinks he can be Pierre Polyev. I don't think he can. And, um, you know, it was to buck up the troops and to rally them to get behind the next choice for a speaker after Anthony Rhoda uh, destroyed his career and, and harmed Canada's reputation. They're trying to line up behind a single choice. I don't know who that is. It probably doesn't matter because this is a tired old government that has to go. While the fallout from the Canadian Parliament applauding a Nazi will continue. Go to the TorontoSun.com and click that subscribe button. You're going to find coverage on this and stories you will not find anywhere else.